Joan was just so beloved by so many people. Yes, I have people that reach out to me, people that are very happy that I have dug into this case. The people who are not happy are the authorities and the Websters. What are the current authorities doing now, these, all these years later? They don't do much, uh, but I will mention one person's name. His name is David O'Sullivan. He's an assistant DA in Essex County, Massachusetts. He's the assistant DA, and I met with him in person. He's responsible for records requests, if people mm. request records. They hide behind a shield that this is an open case. It's not been solved. So they say certain things are out of bounds, and certain things would be out of bounds. But there are some records that they have released, and there are some records that they could. Um, right now, he's in the violation of Massachusetts' own law on records. It's been appealed. Uh, he's just in complete defiance of uh, providing records. And what I've asked for are records that they have that would support their theory that the boat existed. I've provided them with court records that said that boat did not exist. And it was even in the media at the time. Uh, there were news articles about the fact that this boat was missing. How would you feel, you know, Essex County, and how do you feel you've been treated by them through this? Terribly. Mm. Um, to my face, they say one thing. To my face, uh, they acknowledge that I have, uh, I know the case. I lived it. I know the case. Uh, they acknowledge that I have good records management. I provided them with a lot of documents. Forgive me, I have a lot of documents, and... This is this is this is not the most pleasant thing I've ever known. No, I can imagine it. It's it's, but your attention to detail is impressive in the sense that I know you know what you're talking. about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So let me look. I'll just cut right to the chase. You you, you certainly mastered the facts. You've mastered the docket management, everything else. Um, knowledge is power. Um, as I started to say, you know, you you had a police officer. I, I'm not the first person to come and kind of blow the whistle on family members and loved ones. This is a very high wire act I walk on because they're also my daughter's family. I don't like seeing them hurt through this, but they can't heal unless, it, right now they're being told that I'm evil and I'm delusional and I'm just this awful person. I'm anything but. I'm a good, decent human being. We don't, we don't, I don't think I can speak for both of us when we don't question your good faith and we yeah. don't question your intelligence or yeah, or anything like that. So. I'm surprised that they don't hire you to work for them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> has, that, has any of that ever happened? Has, have you had any opportunities uh, where people are like, boy, she's good. She doesn't give up, give in. She's tenacious. She she's doing this, you know, out of the goodness of her heart. She's doing this on her time and her dime, mm -hmm. and it's something that. Um, you know, a lot of people would have just, okay, whatever, it's a no-win situation, and just left it, you know, at the doorstep. Has that ever, have people said to you, wow, you should go into, you know, investigatory I feel, work? I feel like I've earned a license or my law degree. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Yeah. Here's what I'm proposing. Should you want to share with us your findings, and I applaud your your efforts, because we are very impressive the way you put this together. Um, I'm giving an outward that we'll look at it. If there's something, some path that we think is worthy of going down, we'll do that. I'm not so certain we'd ever tell you the net result of our travel down that path, unless we thought we might be able to really parlay it into something of various things. I and mean, we may even ask you further questions to say, hey, did you want to come with this when you were looking at this issue and what did you find about it? That, that very frequently happens. Mm -hmm. That's what I propose to do here. I, I appreciate and, that. And I'm not making an empty promise that something will ever come out of this. I wouldn't have promised you that because that's just not fair to you. I know and ours is realistic given unless something really significant jumped out and we thought we could confront somebody or do something, you know, we wouldn't do it. It's mm -hmm. not the way we do it. But uh, but no, I, I you, you made a very um, a very credible presentation and you have my attention. That's for sure. Um, and that's what I propose to do. I live with conscience. Silence is complicity. And 
since I was the only person who was a non-blood relative in the immediate family during all of this, uh, I mean, I have to face my maker one day. And without saying something, that's, that silences complicity as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I also do it for another reason, and that is in protection of my daughters. Yeah. You know, to circle back to what you asked about motive. You know, for the different, there are four critical people who really should be looked at, or five technically. Um, Tim Burke, who was the prosecutor at the time that pursued um, their suspect, Leonard Paradiso, and he was ag aggressive. Um, just, uh, he was obsessed with trying to prove this. Uh, two, two troopers, uh, Andrew Palumbo and Carmen Tamaro, who was uh, Palumbo's superior. Those two officers knew the correct cause of death with correct detail seven years before her body surfaced. And they funneled a story through a snitch, a jailhouse snitch. The jailhouse snitch repeated the story that Carmen Tamaro, Carmen Tamaro was actually the person that invented the boat story. And, you know, why would those two individuals know how Joan died and details about it? I mean, details to the point where they said it was on the right side of her head, a lot of blood gushing. She was struck on the right side of the head. It took out the whole right side mm -hmm. of her head. It was a two inch by four inch hole. She would have died instantly. Um, and then he's funneling this story through a jailhouse snitch, whom I've met face to face, very intimidating circumstance. Um, the authorities out in Massachusetts, they've stifled me. Uh, I've gone to speak at two parole hearings for that snitch. Uh, they won't let me speak publicly. The current assistant district attorney who's in charge of records, David O'Sullivan, uh, he actually put in a letter that this was a waste of time, needless and a waste of time and resources. Imagine being told that about a murdered member of your family. Uh, it's routine. Find out whether that boat existed. Did they make up this story? And then, therefore, the only thing I've asked them uh, is to rebuke that story. You know, let the public know that this was not correct. 